Well, I personally actually feel pretty confident that if I'm washing my hands regularly, if I'm covering my own face, keeping a few feet between me and other people, I feel confident that that really reduces my risk. I'm a lot more likely, I think in my own life, probably to get this infection as other people are from close family members or social contacts. Maybe I'm eating a meal with someone in my own house, right? We don't have masks on. We're very close for a long period of time. Um, but when I say that, I should also say I'm 51 and I'm in relatively good health. I think everyone's got to make their own decision about their own risk and what feels comfortable to them. But yes, I would feel comfortable on public transit. Well, what scientists know about coronaviruses, like the one that causes COVID-19, is that it's spread through very small droplets that have virus in them that come out of people's lungs. So they exit through the nose or the mouth, especially when someone's coughing, singing, laughing, yelling. Uh, and covering up the face is the very best way to keep those droplets staying inside so that they don't land on another person's eyes or nose or mouth or don't come into the air that they're breathing right into their own lungs. I think that passing close by someone very briefly is not a high risk. I don't think that that's something that people have to be very concerned about. The extra protection is to wear masks when possible and have the other folks on the bus wear the masks, but passing close by an operator shouldn't be something that causes people great concern. It's ironic that we have this question after the wildfire smoke. I think the question was before it was smoky. So considering that the air is healthy to breathe in general, uh, outdoor air is actually probably really helpful. Uh, we do think that being outdoors is a lot less risky than being indoors if someone's gonna be close to somebody else because it just um, increases the airflow that moves those droplets away, especially if there's any smaller particles. We still don't know exactly how much transmission is related to what's called airborne. All that means is like slightly smaller particles that may float in the air longer. So uh, open windows is very helpful. Uh, anything else that exchanges airflow, like a good air conditioning system, I think will help reduce risk. So there's a little bit of differentiation between recommendations. The World Health Organization goes more with three feet. The CDC recommends six feet where possible. The Oregon Health Authority gave us the guidance that although six feet is ideal uh, in best circumstances, there are ways we all need to move through the world sometimes where we can't keep that distance. And so we do think that three feet is safe. Uh, the six feet is more like a margin of safety when we can do that. And if people are within six feet, then that's where we use the guidance also of adding the mask to protect each other. Well, I think we need to remember that there's a small percentage of folks, uh, depending on the age of infants or toddlers or people with medical conditions that really does make it hard to breathe with a mask that may not be able to wear one. Certainly, I think if we're uncomfortable being closer to someone, we could move seats if we're able to do that, uh, and that might be helpful. Uh, wearing your own mask, however, if it fits well, will give you protection if the other person is not wearing a mask. Wearing a mask that covers your mouth and not your nose is gonna give a little bit more protection than no mask at all. But I think it's actually really important that people wear a mask that covers their nose and their mouth. Certainly all those respiratory droplets we're talking about can leave your nose just like they can leave your mouth. And that's also a way that a virus can get into your body. So the CDC doesn't recommend face shields in place of a mask. Uh, our own health department doesn't either. They're open on the bottom. Air can still get in, air can still get out. Uh, healthcare workers who are very up close to people can wear a face shield with a mask if they need that eye protection. Uh, and that would be a consideration for folks. Uh, we don't recommend that people wear a face shield instead of a mask. There may be certain considerations or certain specific situations where it's necessary. Uh, if somebody, for example, um, is translating or working with somebody who reads lips, then being able to see the mouth is important. And so people may make some individual choices like that.
You know, I don't have a specific number that I can give about the likeliness. We do think it's less likely to catch it from touching a surface that somebody has coughed or sneezed on and then touching your own mouth or eyes or nose. However, it is still really important to wash hands because we don't think the risk is zero. Uh, so definitely the surfaces that we touch more frequently we should wash and washing hands or using the hand sanitizer throughout the day, especially before we eat, would be really important. There's been some confusion about what's the difference between airborne or respiratory. Basically, um, diseases that infect somebody that come out of someone else's lungs are in different sizes of droplets. And so the larger the droplet is, the heavier it is, and it'll fall out of the air and settle on something within a couple feet of somebody. Uh, if someone has very, very small particles that are called airborne, then they can float in the air for quite a bit longer, and that makes it much more infectious in a grocery store, for example, or a large setting uh, where people are just moving around but not very close to each other. We think that most of COVID-19 transmission is from the droplets that fall out within a few feet, which is why our distancing is so important. Uh, some things that happen can cause more of that airborne transmission or that really small particle. Uh, singing, laughing, some medical procedures, for example, that are done. And those, uh, for example, in a healthcare setting are when people that need to be close up to someone, they use a lot more masks and different kinds of masks. Face masks should be washed if they're made out of cloth once a day. If they're paper, then they should be disposed of and a new paper mask should be used. If they get wet, then they don't work very well and they should be traded out. They can be washed with, uh, in a washing machine. They can be washed in a bowl with hot water and some dish soap, for example. They can be dried in the dryer. Uh, most important thing is to take it off carefully so that you're not touching the inside and the outside. Same thing with putting it on, right? If the face mask has germs on it that have been, you've been protecting yourself from, you don't want to end up putting them all over your hands and then touching your mouth or your nose right afterwards. So taking them off by the ear loops or the strap around the back, folding it so the inside stays on the inside until you can get it washed um, are ways to treat it that will keep it more healthy for you. So some of the things that have changed have been recommendations around masks, as we know, uh, understanding more how important it is to isolate or to quarantine. Sometimes policies around schools have changed or our thinking changes when our science changes. Sometimes we see what other countries or other parts of our own country are doing that are really great ideas. And so sometimes we have to change our policies based on the resources that we have as well as the science or just more information we have about what's acceptable to people and what's actually feasible. For example, masks, we did not have science about face coverings made out of cloth until people did that research to see how effective they were. And people may not remember, but at the very beginning parts of our pandemic, the hospitals didn't have enough masks for their staff. And so it was really important for us to not focus as much on the general public using masks because they were in such incredibly limited supply that we needed them for our healthcare workers. But as that changed, and as we knew more, then we could change our policy. Uh, no, I don't think that's true. I think that goes back to taking it off carefully so that you're not touching the side of it that's contaminated before you touch your own mouth or nose is important. Washing your hands before and after or using hand sanitizer is important. Trying to minimize how much you need to put it up, down, up, down, making sure it fits well. Some face masks are a little bit small and they sort of ride down over your nose and then you're adjusting it a lot. That will make it less helpful, but that won't increase your chance compared to nothing at all. Uh, I don't have a specific number, but I would say frequently. Uh, if someone is moving through the public touching a lot of surfaces that other people are touching, then using hand sanitizer when you step out of that environment is good. Certainly um, before you take off your mask, after you take off your mask, before you eat. If you need to sneeze, blow your nose, then using it afterwards is very helpful for other people in case you are sick. Um, so keeping hand sanitizer on your body so that you can use it is a good idea. Um, washing hands with warm water and soap is also a really good idea. So a phone is usually a really high touch surface uh, that 
you can be touching other things and then touching your phone and then putting it right up next to your face, right? Touching it frequently. So we do think that cleaning your phone probably once a day um, would be a good idea. People need to look up what, you know, what kind of products they can use on their own phone. Um, but it should be considered as something just like anything else in the environment that we'd want to wipe down frequently.